So we already uh, covered um, for what is programming, and we already covered what is algorithm installing Python 3.8, upgrading. So uh, at this time, I'm going to install um, Python, and we will uh, check it out uh, from there. But before I install Python, I will show you that on my, my machine currently I'm running Python 3.8. So I will need to upgrade it to Python 3.8. Uh, 8 rather than 3.7, the one that I have. So uh, if I open a CMD command prompt on Windows, you type in CMD to get a command prompt, and uh, this nice uh, dialog window comes in. And from here, you could run any Windows command and that you know. For example, help. I was showing you that all these commands are available. If you're looking for like a command like help three you could see that uh, it uh, says that. And if you just say, what is that tree do? It's actually give you a nice uh, tree format of your uh, directory structures. If you want to do subdirectories, you could do it. But at this time, I'm going to control C out of it because it is really long. But uh, like help tree could give you like what level you want. Display the name of the files and folders and ASCII characters. So you could uh, you could um, configure it a little bit shorter and depend on what directory you want. If you are looking for a directory path here, uh, for example, let's say on videos, I could say three uh, colon slash videos. So say uh, from this directory on, look at all the videos. Uh, sorry, I had to do a uh, DOS uh, uh, command and. Um, three help three is there and then three is the path right so three and then the path in this case is uh, videos i type in the videos wrong that's why and if i just uh, have another directory like python i could get a, a three of that one it will be much longer three of that it would be uh, much more because under that one every directories that are there if I just need like subdirectories, then I have to uh, specify the path. So within this command prompt, it shows that I'm uh, using my regular user ID what he, uh, there. And then right here it says command prompt. But this is my privilege, which means that uh, if I go to uh, say uh, run Python, this is going to uh, find Python from the uh, directory where uh, my path is. So if I just exit out of this, come back to my original screen, then I say, what is actually Python 3.7 installed on this Windows machine? In order to do that, when I type in path or echo percentage or path percentage. If you're on a Unix machine or Linux, just replace uh, this percentage to a dollar sign and don't put a uh, percentage at the end. It will just do the same thing that uh, you do it on Windows. On the um, Unix, you cannot just type in path and get the variable. You have to do echo and then dollar sign path. So you will get the um, path, but notice that uh, the program files for each one of them is uh, specified, then it's a semicolon, then another uh, directory. So for each one uh, to look at it, if I look at, uh, for example, for um, Python, it's really hard for me to look at this uh, thing. If I say, Go ahead, um, find the word, um, find the word Python in this list and ignore the case sensitivity. It's going to still do the same thing. I don't know uh, how I'm going to exactly pinpoint it there. If, if the file is really huge, what you want to do is uh, send this information to a file called, let's say, path, the, my path, my p.txt, right? And then do a notepad on my p.txt. This, this greater sign just created this information and wrote it into this file called my p.txt. So I just uh, redirected the output of this one to another file by putting this greater sign. If I do a double greater sign, that appends it. And instead of rewriting to it, it will just append to the end of it. So these are uh, things that operating system allow you 
with file descriptor. Later on, I'll just explain when we get to the file uh, read and write I/O uh, kind of performance. I will explain uh, what is redirection, what is piping, what is um, uh, you know uh, file descriptor, how you open a file descriptor, what is context manager, everything. We will go through those ones. You might have questions, just stop me at that time and I will explain. But uh, right now I just created this file called myp.txt and notepad, I'm going to open it with notepad, now it opens. So at this time, if you see this is a very long uh, line, but a, a notepad has something called find text. So I could say Python, search for it, and then it's gonna go detected where it is there. So it actually starts from this directory on um, find, right? So the next time I just search it again, uh, I have to go up. Look at this path, it's um, C colon Wahid Abdida local program files this and the uh, path. And, and which means that if I go to CD to local um, data, uh, app data actually, app data, and then uh, local, and then programs, and then uh, Python, then I will see that Python 32 is there. So you CD to star, because only directly I could just do that. i use the wildcard CD star 32. It will find that. And now um, the python.exec is the one that is going to do this. So wh whether I type in this python.exec here, it will take me to the same uh, 3.4, or I could type in Python, uh, it takes me the same place. And the reason that it takes me the same place is because of the path to Python. So this uh, path uh, to Python uh, is already specified that um, uh, go there in order to find it, right? So I could just even uh, cut and paste this area uh, up to here, up to 32 right here and say edit edit uh, copy so i could be somewhere else and uh, if I, my path is not set to that one let's say my path is xyz like i'm going to say set path is equal c colon okay so now i just changed my path if i do echo percentage path um, it will just say this so if my path was not defining now i type in python it's not going to know it, it just says uh, this is not there, even though the executable is there. So on Unix, you type in which, it will just find the file on the path as long as it's on the path environment variable. Here, there's no which command to uh, tell you. So if you uh, set your path to be something else, and then even though the Python is uh, there installed, it will not find it. There's a way to uh, do that one. So now if I just, uh, what I cut and paste here, I just do this. Um, let me just cut and paste this area up to here. I say edit, copy, edit, paste. So I will just paste this information into the prompt um, there and then uh, get rid of this uh, semicolon here. And then right here, I could type in slash um, Python, it would work because it finds the executable there. I type in that, or I could say dot exact, it would work. Or I could just say um, a CD to that, this path. And then uh, from there, once I go to relative to that path, then I could just uh, run python.exec. It will just do the same thing. But notice that uh, since I'm going to quit this time rather than exit, uh, it is the same thing. Uh, rather than um, doing this, if I define my path, since I uh, modified my path, the nice thing about this one is I say uh, echo dollar sign path, um, sorry, percentage path. Uh, since I modified it, it automatically is not going to see that one if I just uh, type in um, uh, outside of this directory. And like I say, Python here, it's not going to know because 
that path is relative to this Python um, 37-32 slash Python. From this point on, you should get the idea that if you're executing, it's either a, a relative path or absolute path. If you just specify the full path, it is an absolute path. Uh, right now, this one, I was on this directory, okay? I was in this directory, I uh, specified this relative to where I was, okay? So if I just, um, on this other directory, on the Python directory here, uh, I have, if I do this one, it's not gonna work. Now I have to add in Python in front of that one because relative to where I am, and then I put a slash here, uh, and then it's gonna work. So relative where I am, what I wanna call it. And then and now the path, I missed it up because of this uh, set command that I did. So the good thing is that this is under, under the control panel. If you go under control panel, and on uh, Unix, this is on your bash RC and dot profiles and all the uh, ETC profile directories. So you don't have to worry about it if you by accident uh, made a typo on the path. You can um, just have problems on that session because right now you see I'm here. If I just run and run a Python, Python is not going to know. And if I run pip, it's not going to know because even though um, they are on subdirectory somewhere there, they are not going to be found. But the nice thing is um, because on the control panel, uh, let me go to the control panel. Um, so I just close this one. I don't need it. And um, right here on the control panel under the uh, system environment variables are already defined there um, under the system. So you go here and then advanced uh, system setting and uh, environment variables here you will see that the path is already defined. This is going to be there. So all I have to do is uh, go to another uh, command prompt, exit out of this, and just open another command prompt. And then if I just look at, uh, look at it uh, from here, I type in path, it's already there. So Python is already there. Um, and then the same thing, uh, if I do Python dash dash a version to get what version I have, as you can see, it's 3.74, it will show the same thing. And then if I do um, Python dash V, it will tell you the same thing. And then uh, pip dash V for um, Python uh, index packages, uh, and they call it Python package indexing but it's written pep uh, with P uh, for Python, I for index and P for package. So that, that one version is also used for 3.74, but it's like uh, pep 19 or something. Whatever version that you have, it will uh, pep 20 in this one, 3.7 um, version. So this pep has its own commands. So if I just do pep list, it will just do all the showing all the packages uh, that are currently uh, in addition to my uh, other packages that are uh, there. For example, MySQL, um, PEP for uh, PyNum, requesting everything. We went through the um, number of things for this one. And uh, I also took the um, my SQL uh, from the um, modules because see, uh, SQL, was uh, just another class. Uh, it's just covering it. Um, if a time allows, I'll cover just for uh, like a bonus kind of session, but we're not required to uh, cover that one. Uh, and um, I could give you some uh, updates if you need like uh, to know uh, MySQL or uh, SQL or SQLite or Oracle or something. I can always help you on the site uh, telling you on an email what to uh, learn and uh, what is good for industries, what is good for schools. Because um, in each class that we have an agenda, we have to cover on um, those topics. So PEP, um, uh, like I could do like a PEP uh, list or PEP search, for example, um, 
and look for a request, for example. Uh, you could do search, and if it is not there, you could install it. Uh, virtual environment. I'll look at all the number of uh, packages that are already um, uh, available for just a request. So at this time, let me just uh, to show you how to install uh, Python. How to install Python, since Python is already there, uh, you could take advantage of the version that is already installed by just typing Python here. So this will get you in Python, and then you could uh, say print hello world. As simple as that, one line. If you have to write in C, the same hello, or C++, or Java, you have to include a standard I.O. I start with the function main, and then uh, start the uh, parentheses and uh, close parentheses, return zero. You have to do a lot uh, in order to just uh, write a low word. And then um, same thing with uh, C++, same thing with uh, Java, same thing with all other languages. But Python is very simple, very easy, very intuitive, and uh, uh, it makes sense uh, to learn it in a short time and um, be uh, an expert on it. Uh, in a few years, uh, depending on how much time you spend on it. So, uh, like for example, let's say I want to add numbers, I could add a 2 plus 5, I could do that one. And uh, these numbers that I'm adding, or I could just multiply them uh, and uh, subtract them, you could do that one. And then notice that when I do that multiplication, there's no op uh, operand. Uh, it has the operator has to work on another operand. So when you do this, and then uh, the order of precedence also matters. So if I just put uh, uh, this, what is happening is what is between the braces is going to be, be done uh, first. Five times two is going to be ten. Then is going to be doing the addition, and then uh, so uh, all together was seventeen minus two was um, uh, 15. So if I just do this one times, now notice this one is um, uh, 5 times 2 is going to be uh, 10, then times 2 is 20, 20, and then that would be 27. Uh, uh, because at that order that it's matter is important. So if I just um, change this one to uh, say, do this one, so what's happening here, that uh, 2 plus 5 is going to be done, that's 7. 5 times 2 is going to be done, uh, that's uh, next. So this is 10, and 10 plus uh, 7 is 17. Uh, but this one is not going to be done 17. So this and that one is going to be done first. Uh, 5 times 2 is going to be 10. 10 times 2 is um, um, 20, and then 20 plus 17. This one is also 27. Uh, and then um, the order uh, is uh, there. So now watch if I do divide by four, I get some numbers. And then if I divide by zero, I should get um, a problem. Division by zero not allowed. So Python um, does know exactly what you're doing and it, it does calculate it. Whenever a divide by zero is not allowed, it is just gonna uh, throw an exception. There's a block of code in Python. It say try except uh, um, uh, when exception happens. So you're trying some kind of uh, comparison. Say try um, if if um, the denominator is not divided by zero. It's an, another number equal to zero. Then try this um, calculation. Otherwise, throw an exception. Say divide by zero is not allowed. So there's a lot of method you could do this one. On the fly, you could do uh, create variables, like you say for x is equal 5, and then print x. You could see that. Uh, and then uh, uh, if you just do x itself, it will print it. Now, the nice thing about Python and other programming languages, you have to define the type of the um, data type that you want to use. For example, in C and Java and C++ and other languages, Pascal, Ada, Fortran, all of them, you are going to define that data type. For example, in C, you say int uh, x, and then you just assign the value of 5 for it. You tell the data type whether it's a, uh, uh, just um, 
regular data type or it's uh, an array or uh, um, uh, whatever data type that you define, it has to be, uh, the type has to be declared. Then you can cast it afterward. And in, in, um, in Python, if you declare x is equal 10 here, and then I say x is equal uh, name Wahid, uh, let's say Wahid, uh, and then uh, it doesn't uh, care. Now I print the x, it's there. If I just say x is equal 10.5, a floating point, then it's gonna just take uh, a floating point there. So if I take x is equal uh, one character a, and then print x is there. Now the only thing is there is there's a function called type. Then you can just see the data type that this uh, uh, um, variable holds. So each variable holds um, a storage uh, of data type. The data type, the variable is just a pointer to memory space that is going to do it. And then based on the variable that they declare, whether it's an integer, which is a number, or um, uh, a string, uh, or a, a, a float, or a, a something, a boolean, anything, a list, to, a tuple, a data dictionary, any of them, uh, we will just go through a number of them uh, on this session and then install uh, the other one as well uh, after, uh, so you could see and those uh, definition. But, um, so let's say I'm, I'm def uh, defining x is equal five. Uh, if I look at the type of, uh, of uh, x, this one is just saying it's an integer, right? Integer, if I just uh, say what I can do with x, all the methods that are uh, defined now, uh, I could say dir on it. And look at all the list of dirs uh, that are available for uh, this x uh, as um, information. So one of them is um, like a size of. The size of, if I just do um, x dot underscore underscore size of this magic method, and then I use it as a method, and then uh, I use the left parenthesis, right parenthesis, it will tell me uh, how much, how many bytes of a storage this x value takes. So if I create a y value and say you know, 10, then I do size of x is, uh, 14, so that's size of y, because they are 14 bytes long. If I just uh, change the y to uh, 1,000, then still the data that is um, uh, representing uh, on the storage is 14 bytes long. And then now if I just say uh, x is equal, f is equal float is equal 10.0. Now I do a, a f dot size of, That this is going to be 16 bytes. So and then if I just say type of um, uh, F, this one is a float uh, data type. So if I just say um, uh, directory of F, what I can do with uh, the float uh, data types, same thing that uh, you could do with a string, some of them are also available for, uh, for you to do with um, uh, float. There's another data type called um, complex. Complex is, uh, has uh, two um, parts. One is a real number, one is imaginary number. So complex is uh, defined like C is equal 10J. Now if I say type uh, of uh, C, uh, type uh, C, it shows that it's uh, uh, there as a complex data type. And then if I do a dir of uh, C to see what I can do with it, and there you go, uh, a number of functions that are there. Size of complex is a little bit bigger than uh, other ones. So I'm going to do size of, I think it's 32 bytes or something, 24, 24. So then there's a data type also um, for uh, Boolean. For example, um, true and false is um, Boolean. So if I just say, um, T is equal true, and then say type of T. You can de declare variables lowercase or uppercase. Uh, it is important that, uh, that uh, variables when you declare, they don't have um, a spatial characters. Uh, 
uh, in it, and that, that's not allowed. For example, I cannot say dollar sign T is equal to root. That is not going to be allowed. Or uh, at uh, is a special character. So variable declaration, uh, it, it allows underscores, underscore, um, and then you could just say underscore T will just print it, or underscore, uh, underscore uh, something. It is still gonna allow that one. Uh, so uh, it also allowed the name. Um, so dash is not allowed. And like you could not say my uh, dash name is equal uh, Wahid. You could not do that uh, because uh, dash is not allowed in the variable declaration. So you could say uh, my underscore name is equal Wahid that will do it my underscore name is uh, going to print that one. And then, for example, this my underscore name is a string. So if I type in this, the data type of my underscore name is a string data type, you can see that um, it is, uh, the size of this one is a little bit longer. So um, my underscore name dot underscore uh, size of, uh, and, and the storage wise, you could just, declare that one is 30. And then um, with um, dir of um, my underscore name, it is um, a number of functions you could do with it, methods that are there like uppercase uh, conversion and a stripe set and, and so on. There's so much uh, on this one you could do also. Um, for example, let's say I create a, a string called uh, a string one is equal it's not good to call it a str because a str is a actual string. So uh, let's call it this one. Do not confuse with the string. And say this is a long line of um, code that I like to save. Uh, so now I uh, save that one in S1. And S1 is, uh, if I just print it, print um, S1. And then uh, if I say, um, the string uh, my name, my underscore name n uh, s1, it will say false because a Boolean operator is going to check to see if it is there. But if I change this one to say uh, long because uh, a long line is there, so I have to just put uh, the string, this is string to uh, check on s1, it will just say that, yeah, that's true. Then I could just say if, um, uh, um, let's say my name, my name uh, n is one, then and this is an f statement. When you start the f statement, you're saying if this is string is within this is string, then I start off uh, coding. And then uh, this colon means like almost like a indentation um, start with. So now this uh, three dot is the, next um, kind of prompts that allows you to just go to in the line of coding. Uh, almost uh, in other languages, you start with a begin and end or a brace with other ones. With Python, there's no begin, there's no end, there's no braces to start with, but there's indentation. So as soon as you start the F block, you have to indent it. So with four columns from F, one, two, three, four. So now I can do uh, the next command. Um, and uh, Python 2.7, if I do a five uh, fields, it would complain. With Python 3, is a little bit generous. It is going to allow you, but it is not good programming to just have extra um, spaces with indentation. It is the, throws up uh, the formatting. And sometimes if you're inside PyCharm, IDEs and other ones, they just kind of give you a little bit warning with uh, some tilde, with uh, some uh, coloring to tell you that um, you need to correct that one. So here I could just say, if this is um, in a name, and uh, then I say print um, the word my underscore name plus, and then I'm gonna say was uh, found in, um, class S1. 
So what I'm doing here, it says if my name is found in this one, then it should say Wahid uh, was found in S1, which is this long uh, listing. Since this is not the case, it's gonna just, um, we're not uh, do this F statement. This is gonna be false, so this print statement will never get executed. Now I'm gonna do a else part. I'm gonna say else, then uh, do the same thing, say print um, my underscore name plus was not found in plus S1. So this case, uh, this plus is a concatenation symbol. And uh, JavaScript and um, uh, a lot of uh, languages, Perl and um, uh, Python and maybe um, I believe on uh, C or C++, plus, C++ plus or Java um, and JavaScript for sure, it allows it to do this concatenation. Some of the times in JavaScript, you do the document write or something and you could just uh, concatenate the string with this. Some languages use a dot operator to concatenate to string. So here, this one, it just says Wahid was not found because that is true. This word statement was false. So if I just change that one, Wahid, to um, my underscore name to say uh, code, it uh, doesn't matter. Nobody's name is code, but Python name is code. I could just uh, give it a name. So my Python name is code or coding. Doesn't matter. Uh, we were just testing something here. Uh, so if I do that one and run the same F statement again, uh, this one is if this, then run the same print in this, and then uh, uh, do the else here, and then do the same thing, print was not found. This time it's gonna say code was found in the string, uh, uh, was actually not found, so uh, why it did not find it there? Uh, Actually, there is no code there. Why well, it was not found in the long line of, yeah, it is code there. So what is happening here? My name, uh, let me print my underscore name. So my name is there and S1 is there. So if I just say if my underscore name and S1, and then one, two, three, four, print, yes. This should uh, print yes if it is found. Uh, yeah, it did. Uh, so why this code was not found? If code is there, oh, that both of them, I just cut and pasted wrong. This one should have been not, uh, without the not. So if I just run this one, when you cut and paste, you have to be very careful. So this is a good learning curve for cut and paste part. If you do that, if my name is S1 and then print and this one is uh, there. I just want to change it to was found. And then else, else and then was not found, was uh, not found right there. So this one it will say was found in the code. And it is true. So the, the data type, uh, we talk about uh, a number of these ones so far with the strings and everything. So if I just say it's one and then I say it's one dot upper, I could convert the whole thing in uppercase. And then I could say it to lower. And then uh, you could use object oriented method. You could say upper again, and it will convert it to upper. And then uh, put it at uh, like um, um, capitalize, dot capitalize. Um, so the capitalize is the first letter is getting uh, capitalized uh, to the T. You could do a number of things with um, and this. If you say S1 is the string, and then I say length of S1 is um, how, how many links, uh, how many characters are there. It is um, S1. So S1 is 47 characters long. Um, you could um, get uh, like, for example, other data types. We talked about uh, Boolean. Boolean is um, true or false uh, only. So either uh, something is gonna match. Some of these condition, if you say two is equal to, that is also true. 
but two is uh, not equal to four, uh, 12. And then um, there's some um, comparison is um, uh, equal or less than. Um, so the uh, less than or equal actually is like this. And then and greater or equal, and greater or equal is this. So you could compare those ones. Not equal is this symbol, not equal. And then there's um, module and uh, other operator, for example, in uh, calculation when you do it. And look at this one. Uh, right now, if I just uh, want to clear my screen from here, um, I could do uh, like import uh, um, operating system module, say OS, and then I could say OS.system and then do a, a clear screen because I'm inside the um, DOS. I could type in a CLS clear screen that would do clear screen for me. So if, if I just did that one and say, let me just um, create a um, tuple. So I am going to create a tuple called tuple and then um, say 10 comma 5 comma and uh, 5 comma 9, 11, 1 comma 9 comma uh, uh, 11 comma uh, six comma five. So notice five is repeated uh, three times, but uh, list allows it. List, uh, I mean, uh, uh, tuple allows it. List allows it, but set does not allow it. Set does not allow repeated uh, values because uh, uh, list and um, tuples and dictionaries they uh, are uh, having indices. So by the indices, whether it's a hashing, keep a pair value in dictionary or a regular index on a tuple or, or a list, you could still access the data type. So for example, on this one, if I say T sub one, uh, uh, print uh, T sub zero, it will print a 10. But if I do uh, a, a one, it will be five. Two is also five. And then um, three is equal one and so on. So I could say uh, print uh, uh, tuples of uh, zero to uh, the end of it. The end of it, I could just uh, leave it blank. It will print all of them uh, as a tuple. I could just say uh, start with in, uh, number two, uh, so from five to do it, and then uh, end with five um, if there is any uh, between them. The, when you say five at the end of it, the five uh, element, uh, the, that one will actually not be printed. So it started with this five, and then five is uh, the, um, uh, this one is uh, two, and then uh, three, and then four, but then uh, the fifth element will not be printed. In order to get that one, you actually have to do uh, either um, as a sixth element to get that one, or just um, do an end, or um, just uh, depend on how many you want to pick it up. You could get also length of um, length of uh, T1. Length of T1 is also uh, giving you, so if I just say length of T1, it will just give me the eight elements that are there. If I print T, uh, T1 by itself, it will there uh, do this. So now if I just want to uh, get uh, indices of each of element of this, I could say for item and T1, and then one, two, three, four, five. Print um, item. Now I just uh, printed all those uh, 10 items, or eight items that are there. So the, the tuple, if I do a directory of uh, T1, you could see these are the functions that I can get. So I can get uh, T1.count, to see how many elements are uh, there um, on it. This is a, um, um, a method a object that is uh, returning and uh, a number of uh, elements count. Uh, so in order to do this one, for example, T1 is there. If I just say this one count uh, the item five, uh, the uh, number five, how many are there? It will just say three of them. And then if I just do one, it is only one. If you do 11, 
and and there now the uh, uh, the thing about uh, the t1 t1 is a uh, uh, immutable uh, meaning that cannot be changed that's the difference between uh, tuples and uh, list and sets and other ones so um the t um there are three elements and or three data types that are immutable in python one of them is tuples the other one is a string the other one is numbers once you define them uh, when they are immutable immutable is written like this immutable and then uh, if they are immutable they are uh, they cannot be changed when it is mutable it can be changed so i cannot just say t1 is equal i can just give it another um, element uh, to say uh, t1 is another list of 10 comma 5 and then if i just say t1 is equal t1 sub uh, 0 is going to print um, 10 and t1 sub um, 1 is going to do that but now i cannot say t1 sub uh, 1 is equal 20. i cannot change it because uh, two poles it says object does not support item assignment it's immutable so that's the difference between uh, this but if i create a list called list one and then um, list one is equal and then unless the syntax is instead of uh, parentheses you define a data type of um, list with um, with um, a bracket like that so list you could say apple um, here you could uh, define um, all, all kind of max data type even you could say uh, for example uh, uh, tuples so you could even say a uh, uh, tuple that is um, uh, five and six and there and then um, and then you could just say name is uh, Wahid for example and then you could say a number one and then uh, 20 and then have um, repeated numbers uh, of one a few times let's say five times and then now if i say list one it will just uh, print it if i just say print all the items in this list one and say item in l1 and then go ahead print it uh, say item i could just get each element there but notice if i just say um a list one sub zero is going to give me um apple and if i do list one um dot five let's say is 20 and then list um three is uh wahid and um two is uh the tuples notice that two is a tuple actually so and now i can con uh, change the l1 sub two uh, and just assign it to say uh Lutfi. i want to change that uh, from a, a list to just another name i uh, still print it i get that one so now if i just say l1 i just modify that but um, that is a list list is defined within the brackets so you can change a uh, one element like l1 sub uh, one which is pair i could say orange change it to orange and then uh, print l1 it will just update that one and then you could do l1.pop to just remove the last item from uh, this one now if i just do l1 it is just one list so if i do uh, l1pop every time i print it is one list so uh, l1.pop you can see that it is uh, uh, always uh, getting from the top of the stack uh, popping uh, the last item last in for stuff that's what the life on the stack is so and this one if i just do it continuously it is just uh, popping out but if i just print out uh, l1 notice l1 is getting shorter and shorter so every time i pop there's always push and other things also append to it so like for example um door of l1 we when we cover um less than uh, strings and other ones I'll cover a lot of these items as we go and I want to just make sure that you understand 
while we're talking about these dictionaries and everything. You can see it has remove, reverse, insert, index, extend. We will go through a number of these ones, copy uh, one list to another list. So you could say L2 is equal uh, L1.copy. So we just made a copy of L1 and L2 is a copy of it. And then um, you could you could do a number of things. You can add another uh, element to it and call it extend, uh, just to add to the uh, things. So now we covered um, um, less. We covered tuples. Um, let's cover set. Set is like uh, let's say S one is already there. So I'm gonna modify S one to be a set. This time a set is. Um, Similar to what um, uh, a list does, except it does not have um, duplicate elements. So, and then it's defined uh, similar to the way the dictionary is. So I could say and uh, this and uh, that, and then one, two, and let's say I go another one here, it will not allow it. So I'm gonna try that to just show you. And then um, if I just say this again, it will not allow it. And then I'm gonna say um, Apple, and then floating point is 5.5. So you could put um, some kind of data type that you want and without any issue. It will just do S1. Now uh, look at S1 here. It will just uh, show uh, each of those elements, even though I define it twice, they only added only once. Number one is only showing here. It doesn't matter how many times you do, and the uh, definition of a set is not uh, allowing duplicate element. It removes it before it uh, shows it. And the reason is that you cannot do uh, like S1 sub uh, zero. There's no such thing as S1 sub zero, like in other ones that you have. Since you don't have indices, you cannot have duplicate element the way you reference each of these va variables through a for statement. So you could say for um, my S1, let's say N S1, and then say um, five elements and then print my S1. Now it uh, will just uh, get the elements there. You can change um, some elements uh, to do, do it on the um, S1 or by removing it, depending on what function is available here. Dir of S1, you could do that. See, they have remove and then pop and other ones. So the last this that is there, if I say S1.pop, again, it will just take the last uh, element. And notice that this one removes from the S1 from the fr uh, front end. So uh, right here, S1, it removed two. The next one, if I do pop, is gonna do 5.5. So this one is uh, not LIFO, um, it is uh, FIFO. First in, first out, let's say like a queue. And the first that is on the queue is gonna finish first, like almost waiting on a cashier machine, uh, waiting for a cashier to help you out. You are the first one in the row, you for, uh, first be served. Um, but the LIFO, last in, first out is a stack, uh, not Q. Uh, stack is almost like a, a trays on um, on a, a restaurant that you can see. The last one, um, the, the the tray that is put on the stack is the first one that it gets popped out. That's what uh, the concept is. So data structure is very important in every programming language. And when you're working with a lot of different data types, you need to understand the concept of what can you do with this data type, what you cannot do. it. For example, a number, you cannot say five is equal 10. And that is not an assignment uh, uh, saying that this, you cannot do that one, right? So numbers cannot be um, uh, uh, mutable, uh, it's uh, immutable. Uh, a string is also uh, immutable. So you cannot just say S1 is equal, S1 is equal uh, Wahid, Wahid, and then you could just uh, change the whole uh, S1 to give it something else and print out that one is fine, but you cannot say S1 sub zero um, 
if you just print it, it's going to say Lutfi and it's one sub. Um, uh, there's a U and uh, for each uh, array element, you could print it, I'm sorry, uh, two is T and then three is uh, F and then four is uh, um, Y, four. So now if I just do a five, it is out of uh, range. And then um, if I just say it's one sub two, but what about this one sub two, I wanna define it, call it T, 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 something, it's not gonna allow it does not support the item assignment. So a string, uh, numbers, and tuples are not allowed. That I already showed you on tuple, I just showed you on the string, and earlier five is equal 10 uh, was um, just there. So when you say five is equal uh, 10, this is different. This is a condition statement. Uh, this is not an assignment operator. If I just do five is equal 10, this will not be allowed. This is just going to throw an error because this is an assign an, uh, assignment statement. You're saying assign the value of 10 to 5, but 5 is not a variable. But if I just say 5 in a string and then just I define it that one, that's fine. And then I print a 5, it will uh, work. So now if I just say um, 5 is equal um, equal 5, that will say true, five is equal five, because the two fives are the same word. So you could compare uh, two uh, numbers, and then uh, if I just say define one of them, this five is equal the string five, and then and now I say five is equal five, it will just say false, because one is a number and one is a string. In order for me to just uh, do that one, I have to uh, just uh, make equivalent comparison and to just say that they are uh, there. I could uh, define um, uh, like F for um, the string five, like this, and then um, on this one, um, I could say five, um, let's say this one is F, this will just say false, but now uh, since F is equal five, I could just say and uh, compare it with this uh, string. Now it's gonna say true. And then if I just did that one, and then I could just uh, compare it with this, it will just say, this is false. But then uh, what if I just do this one, since that is a number, I go this one end, convert the string uh, of five to an integer that will also say true. So the data type has to match, and then the number so it has to be equivalent but you cannot put the word five uh, and then a string and then try to convert it. So I could not say like um, F is equal the word five and then say now F is there. Now I cannot say uh, convert uh, end of um, F is equal to five. That doesn't not make sense because five is just um, something that uh, this five is not. Uh, to convert that uh, end of five, if you just don't get it uh, there because that is uh, not, it's a string that cannot be con uh, equivalent to a five. But f is equal uh, five, uh, let's say f is equal, uh, this is string five, then now if f is there, I can uh, convert this f and that should be okay. And now I just, if I just say, um, get, give me the type of this, it will be okay because it says uh, this is an integer. I convert it to integer. But before that one, if I get the type of it, it says a uh, string because F has that uh, code around it. So the code uh, is um, something that we could, could talk, whether you uh, use double code or single code and Python that supports both of them. But once you start with single code, you have to finish it with single code. And once you do uh, with double code, you have to finish it with double code. In between, you can use a combination of um, other ones. So for example, if I just say X is equal, uh, this is a long text, I cannot do this because that, that is uh, not defined. I have to either put this one double code 
double quote or just uh, this one single quote. Either one would work. Once you start with one type, you have to finish it with that type. And then if you just have within this, you have a character that you wanna just print it, say this isn't, uh, isn't, uh, let's say this isn't uh, like this, it, it throws an exception because it says, I don't understand this. So you can do backspace that one and then it will understand that this is um, another code. But if you um, do this without the backspace, uh, it uh, uh, errors. So now uh, it says that, okay, you could uh, use double code here and double code here, and then uh, use that one without uh, escaping it and it will still work. So that's another type of um, things. There's also a function um, F uh, with uh, this and uh, draw uh, R uh, statements. I'll cover the, all of that one also. So for example, let's say I could say um, X is equal R of um, this is a, the, a new line. This is a, a slash um, a new C colon. Let's say, um, please um, go to the directory C colon slash windows. Like, let's say I just uh, say this. This would work if I use this function uh, called raw. Notice that uh, since I put it uh, this C colon, when I do it at raw, automatically it just uh, puts a double quote for that one for me. But if I just do the same thing, and I did not use it as a raw uh, statement, this is going to just make it, please go to the directory, C, and then slash uh, when those is going to be printed. Let's see. Um, yeah, so this is not a good example. Let me make it a good example. Windows slash um, new directory, okay? Slash new directory. And then if I just do this, um, X is equal, please, uh, this, um, C colon, uh, new directory slash N. Okay, so, um, yeah. So if I just say print X, notice that as soon as you do print X, the X, uh, in this case, uh, is having this characters, but uh, this is interpreted when I print it as new line. Slash N is going to go new line. So it just go to a new line and then type in U, E, W. So in order to avoid that one, I could just say X is equal, and then undo a raw here, and then print X, it will just do the exact uh, thing that you want to do. Or do it uh, without the raw, you have to escape it. So the escape it right here with this uh, slash is gonna just say, don't interpret the new line as new character, just uh, define it to this. So backslash is escaping it. The raw statement also do, does it. There's another one called F statement. I'll cover all that uh, as we go through the class. So this is good enough. Uh, let me just do one more dig, uh, dictionary. Um, uh, example. So if I j just define a, something called uh, data dictionary, data dictionary has key pair values. So if I just say, uh, let me just clear this screen this time, rather than os.system, I am going to write a function, a, sim a simple function to do the same thing. Um, so if I just do that one, I could just write it with one, uh, without the function, I could just say for i and range, and then uh, 20, and then uh, say print um, a new line character. So this is just going to clear my screen for me. There you go. Uh, you could do that one, but if uh, I just wanna repeat that one, I don't wanna go to this. So it's uh, something that is repeatable 
you want to write a function for it. Once you write the function, you could call it as many times as you need. So the uh, command that I was doing at os.system uh, and then uh, clear screen, I'm going to just do the same thing with clear screen. So if I just say help on this one in Python, when you try to write, uh, write help, it gives you some commands, whatever you want to do with it. Like, for example, let's say I am uh, looking for modules. I could get a list of all the modules that are available and um, whatever I want to do it with it. Built-in functions, uh, keywords, all of those ones are available to you as you go. It is, the list is big, so it is taking a little bit of time to just uh, display it on the screen. While this one is done, I'm going to also go ahead and uh, install Python um, so you understand how to install Python from uh, fresh uh, there. Um, this list is big and uh, the, 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 so inside here you could uh, go on the uh, function getting help here and then uh, as you're uh, inside here you could just uh, uh, get more help so for example if i just um, get the um, help and then uh, it just tells me uh, that i have to use a method help so i did that one now um, if i don't print uh, this it is going to give me that and then if I look for math module related to math, it's just gonna give me all that information there. Also, I can get it from the um, Python, inside Python here, I could say help, um, for example, um, let's say request. If, if that method is not loaded, you will not get help on it. Um, but if you say help keyword, and then um, if there's something with keywords, you will get it. Now, let's say uh, OS is already loaded, right? So I could say help on OS module. It will just tell me all the modules that I can use for OS, OS.path, OS.this, and this. All of these methods are available, so you can get help on them. And then um, if you're looking for like uh, os.system, uh, you could say print, uh, for example, let's say just a uh, door of uh, OS. This one, it will tell you all the functions and method and uh, uh, attributes and uh, magic uh, methods that are available for it. So you can say print um, uh, door of OS. And then you could say uh, print type of OS, what is this module? It will tell you it's a module. And then um, so, since it's a module, you could say uh, one of the methods is called system, which uh, does OS.system. And then you could say, um, and then uh, t type in a directory command to uh, print out directory listing of the screen. And then um, if I want to clear my screen, I could do that. It uh, does it. So. And this one, if I just say run the three command on um, Python and that earlier we did, if that's the same path, it will just do the same thing. So inside Python, you could just use any operating system command you want. But uh, all in addition to the system, it has other things like uh, OS.path, OS. Um, dot, let's say uh, I want to just get um, the name that what type of uh, it's a windows nt now uh, this is a windows since windows nt uh, uh, are more secure in terms of nt file system now it becomes high share file system it is supporting it uh, in that format if i'm on a unix machine when i do a OS not, dot name it will say POSIX. so that's a portable operating system uh, information uh, exchange uh, POSIX. And so it's portable code that uh, you could do it on, on multiple platforms. Um, so now let's cover um, on data dictionary. For example, data dictionary, for example, I can create a data type called uh, dictionary one, D1. And then I just use the brace. And now I have a key pair value. So name, uh, I could say first name 
and then colon, and then the value for it, Wahid. And then uh, second name, uh, I mean, not second name, last name, and then uh, a value for it and say Lutfi. And then uh, uh, job, let's say job, and then um, uh, actually title, title. And then I could just give it any title that I want. And so I will give it my work title. Uh, I'm just gonna say uh, enterprise system analyst. That's my full-time job at GPL. That's the title. And then um, you could define that. So now it's uh, defined there. And then um, I could just say P time for a P title and then say instructor part-time uh, uh, adjunct for a faculty. So I could say here, um, P title, P title, part-time title. It doesn't matter what you name the keyword, whatever you name, you have to that uh, use the same thing. And then I say instructor. So let's say this is the dictionary and there is a data type of um, uh, something I missed match. So title, enterprise system analyst, this one I had to code it, I forgot to do, do that first. Everything else is coded already. So now um, title, um, let's see what is wrong here. First name is Wahid, last name is Lutfi, and then um, title, First name Wahid, I must, uh, oh, right here, there's a single code. And like I told you, whatever you start with that one, you have to finish it the same way. So now D1 is there and you can see D1 sub uh, name. Uh, I have to put the uh, uh, index as an associate key and they call it uh, key pair value. So this one will give me Wahid and then first name and then title, uh, last name will give me Lutfi. Title would be giving me uh, enterprise system analyst. And then um, P title. Uh, notice if I type in P title, it's not going to recognize it because that's not a key. But if I type in uppercase P title, it will just say instructor. So if I just want to print each one of them, I could just say for key and um, D1, and then uh, this is a for statement that will go through that list and then say print key um, there. Uh, and then all, all I get was first name, last name, that's the key. But if I want their values, then I have to do key for key, sorry for this one for key, um, comma, value and D1. Uh, then uh, you could just say, um, if you wanna get both of them and say, um, print, um, so key, and then plus um, colon. So for each key, I wanna just do that then comma, and then um, key sub key. Um, D1, D1 sub key. Sub key in this case is that. Um, I'll see the plus, I could do this one plus here, D1 sub key, and um, so this one, too many value annex with this. Yeah, because this one, I don't need to do the for statement. I could do the for statement like for key and D1, that's good enough. Uh, because if I use the function enumerated, I could do it that way. And um, so this uh, does print each one of them, uh, first name, Wahid, last name, 
that P title is enterprise system analyst and P title that is there. If I use this other method of um, assigning it, and then this is something called um, packing and unpacking. For example, let me just uh, clear the screen. So I'm going to write a function to do the clear screen, uh, the Python, and we could call it Pythonic way to do it. Rather than do a OS system call or something, I could say, um, let's say def um, my uh, clear screen. I could just say my clear screen and it uh, doesn't have to say clear screen. We could do that. Um, so now we're just uh, writing a function and then one, two, three, four. So I say for um, I in range of um, 20 uh, times, 20 lines is good enough. Then do one, two, three, four, print a new line. So this will just clear the screen for me. And then now I have that function available. So if I just say, um, my clear screen, it will not work. But if I just do my clear screen with the left and right parentheses, it will work. And that's what uh, that function is. It is defined to clear the screen. So now I do help here and say, uh, door of um, the system and just give me that and door of um, all the objects that I created, like underscore, underscore T, you could get a lot of them and then say, go ahead, my uh, clear screen. Uh, so I just uh, have the screen there, fresh and uh, there. So you could do uh, things on the Pythonic way and very easily and um, get to accomplish the same thing that the OS does or same thing that other application does uh, with using Python programming language. Um, at this time, uh, let's just uh, look at the dictionary D1. So D1, I could say D1 uh, sub um, four, or just print um, all D1 from here to there, and it doesn't print it. So I need to do define a key pair values, uh, say title, um, title, and then, but title, this one is not gonna uh, recognize it unless I put the exact key within the code, and then that's gonna give me the output. So this works, and then um, we and did give an example of dictionary everything. Um, so far, so good. Uh, we did some uh, functions. I'm going to do also an input uh, function because one of the assignment, if we don't get it by next Wednesday, maybe I forget, and then I want to make sure that you understand how to read uh, variables and, and the. So if I say um, print. I'm going to say name is equal uh, input, and then inside here say, please uh, enter your name. So now if I just say, um, please enter your name, um, it, it just did not understand that, it just gave me that, and instead of just um, um, doing what I want to do, but uh, input is a function. So I want to just do a um, print a statement. Uh, please enter your name, and then followed by an input uh, there. So I need to do this, and then um, input name is equal input, um, and then just uh, read that one. Now it's going to read in the name, say Wahid, and then say. Um, type um, actually print name it will say Wahid so if you're reading it from the input you could uh, say please enter your name here and then inside your program and then just call it uh, input um, there if I just um, sorry if I just say input and then I just say five and uh, the name is not going to be just um, a string so at this time, type of name is this, uh, it's not a number. It, the five is actually a string. Uh, so if I print that one, uh, print um, name uh, is going to be um, just saying the character five. 
uh, right? So in this case, as a string, and um, when you do uh, reading the function input, uh, the data type is always a string. If you're doing computation like calculation on it, you have to convert it to integer or float. But other than that, it's a string. So um, work with that name uh, input and all that things as you do. Um, and let me just write a quick uh, a script, a simple script uh, from this Python to show you how you do this. So like, for example, let's say I want to write a hello word. I could say notepad hello.py. And then here, uh, just uh, I want to write the for, first Python program. And normally um, on the Unix, you say uh, shebang, which is a bang pound, and then slash ben slash uh, env, and then either bash or Python or Perl, you uh, tell the interpreter. On Windows, you could do the same thing by using shebang and then Python. Uh, and that, uh, since we are using Python as an interpreter, we could do this. And now we could say, hello world, right? So this will just uh, print it, hello world. And then if I just say file, save, and then just um, now uh, hello.py uh, is there. Since uh, I have the inside there, the shebang Python, it does not have to be executable. Uh, on Windows, you don't make a change mode on it. The attribute of uh, this file is just uh, um, archived uh, attributes uh, of this file is just A for archive. It does not have any executable, uh, like read, write, or executable uh, permissions or set. But because uh, the first line of it, the first uh, line of it, if I just, type hello.py, you can see it has the shebang Python. It knows that, okay, this is a Python script and it's gonna do it. It also, you could execute it like this, python hello.py. I'm sorry, python, python. So it will do the same thing. And if I just do it this way, it will uh, do. If I had written this one in a Linux or Unix environment, I had to make it executable in order to uh, change uh, the permission, uh, and change mode on 755 and then run it. Executable in that format, not executable making it in binary format. Uh, C compilers and other ones, when you say executable, it's called ELF, uh, executable link formatting versus uh, the actual permission of the file being executable. So in this case, uh, let's go uh, with um, a Python here. Since I did that, this, I could also say import hello. And just uh, look at that one, uh, hello world is there. So now if I do, do a dir, there's a module called hello here. Because I, I wrote it and I called that a script inside here. So I could say dir of um, hello, and then all the functions that are specific to that one, it will be defined, but I just had one string to say hello world. So if I just uh, change that one to do some function, like let's say um, uh, notepad, I already have it open here. I could just say, and say def um, clear screen, my clear screen, let's say. And then we just say, this is the function that clears the screen and then say uh, for uh, I and range of, um, let's say 20, that's good enough. Um, and then uh, do a print a statement, a new line. New line is going to just, uh, be printed uh, 20 times, uh, so that's why it clears the screen. And then uh, here I have to call the function, my clear screen after uh, I define it. So now uh, it does a print this uh, statement and does this. So now if I say Python and say import hello, it does the clear screen. Now I do dir of, um, dir of my, um, uh, hello, notice that uh, my clear screen is another function. So if I just say dir of um, 
allow that my clear screen, that's the method of it. With that method, now I can get more information uh, to do the things. And then and let's say I get um, dot underscore name underscore uh, this, it will just say that what I can do with just the name there. If I want to just do the size of, size of, you could get that information for it. So there's a lot of other methods that is there with each one of these ones that are available contains in mod, less than length of it and so on. Uh, so we did all of that and then we uh, practiced how to write a program in Python and execute it. Here, if I just run the same thing, Python hello.py, it will just uh, do the same thing, clear screen, like uh, the Windows does for us. And then um, uh, you could you could modify this one uh, many ways. So it's easier to uh, copy hello.py to hello2.py, let's say, and notepad um, hello2.py, and then just, um, uh, sorry, I, m I must have typed it wrong. Notepad hello2.py. Hello, I missed that. So here I could have just defined something else and then uh, do some other work and then Hello2 would do differently. And then um, uh, let's say I wanna just, instead of doing this, I could just say print um, help on, um, on um, something. And then um, let's say um, on, um, I'm gonna just say import um, import math and then say as m and then uh, say type of uh, m to get that uh, it's a module and dir of m and then help on m. So what I did here import math module as m. Then I say show me the uh, type which is going to show our modules and dir is going to give a big list of all the modules and methods that uh, that one has and then at the end is going to say uh, help on it. It's going to just go fast on the screen but we can always um, do something with it. Python hello to that file and notice that uh, the first one it says it's a uh, help on building math modules and this is just a uh, help on it. The first part uh, type of that one, um, let's just uh, say this um, notepad of this. If we just, um, that uh, this one was big, so I'm gonna comment that one, but I wanna just print this thing. If you don't print it, you won't get an output of these two. So now I'm going to print it uh, and then I should get an output of those two. The help method, I put a comment. And when you do a, a pound in front of it on Python, you're commenting it out. So now I could do the same thing, uh, hello. It just says it's a module, and then here's the information. And then the same thing if you just do Python, uh, I mean, hello, dot .py, it will just do the same thing. Or uh, you go uh, in Python first, Python, and then say import. Uh, if I do a dir of uh, this system now, it's only that. If I just say import hello2, hello2, and then um, I'm not going to give an extension of .py because otherwise it's going to just say, no, you're missing something here. And the extension is just when you're doing it from outside on the command line, okay? So this is uh, Python there. Um, it's 8.53 and we haven't stopped anything. Uh, so right here, I, I, I think we covered enough for this session. And let me just uh, install um, Python um, 3 on top of this one and then uh, I'll stop uh, for 10 minutes as a break. Then when we come back, you guys are using the rest of the time to do lab activities and exercise and practice with these ones. And I'll be available, any question, you just tell me and then we can cover it. 
So let me just install Python uh, 3.8. As you know, this one is uh, 3.7. So I want to just install it. And this one is under my local directory. But I want to make that Python um, 3.8 that I'm going to download uh, available to the system, meaning all users should be able to uh, use it. So let me clear my screen here. Um, and the path that is there, Python is already 3.8. Um, uh, 3.7 is there. I'm going to get that 3.8. Excuse me. So python.org, I'm going to go there, python.org. And then um, go to uh, python.org.